Hello and welcome to this first vSuite version 0.7 video tutorial and in this video tutorial I'm going to cover um, some of the processing we can do to images we generate with radiance and a lot of this has been in existence for a while but there are a couple of new options here to do with denoising of these radiance images and that's what I'm going to cover primarily here. So I have this um, pretty simple scene set up in Blender and uh, I've got a camera here and I can look at that scene through that camera and I've got here my sort of classic Livy node setup. I've got a location node to set my latitude and longitude. I've got my Livy geometry node to convert Blender geometry into radiance geometry. Um, and because I have some textures applied to my surfaces, um, I do have mesh turned on here, which is required if I'm applying textures to radiant surfaces or patterns, as radiance calls them. Uh, and in my Livy context node, um, yeah, pretty much as standard. Um, the only new option here in version 0.7 is split channels, but I'll talk about that in another video hopefully. Um, so the main act here is really the Livy image node. So instead of putting Livy geometry and Livy context into a simulation node, I'm putting it into a Livy image node. And that will allow me to uh, generate a radiance image using RPICT. Um, and we select the camera, the Blender camera that we're looking at the scene from. Um, I have Illuminance turned off here because um, I'm taking an image of luminance, how, how the scene actually looks to me. Um, I haven't got fisheye turned on for this one. I have accuracy set to low. Um, and that is just to kind of um, make a point about the effectiveness of denoising. But when I talk about denoising radiance images, do not um, mistake that for better or more accurate results. We are still limited to the accuracy we set here, but visually we can generate uh, much better looking images with denoising. So the two denoising options which are new are this normal option and this albedo option, which I've uh, both got turned on. Um, I'm not using photon mapping here. Um, and the final thing I'll say that's relevant to denoising is that it's good to have, if you're using uh, multi-threading, it's good to set the X resolution, the left to right resolution of your final image to be a multiple of the processes that you use. Um, it should work anyway, but there's a possibility of there being some slight difference in pixel sizes of the different images that I'm going to generate. Um, and that can muck up the denoising process a little bit. So I've got here the Livy image that's created when I press image here. Um, this Livy image will get slowly populated with the radiance image that's being generated. Now you can see that, um, especially because I've got low accuracy set here, we get this rather um, sort of classic ray tracing speckliness in our image. And this denoising process is going to clean up this image a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to Blender's compositor. And in the compositor at the moment, I've just got a viewer node. Um, and you can add that with output viewer. I'm going to turn on backdrop so that we can see what comes into this viewer node. And now I'm going to add. Uh, now, let me try and remember where this is. <laughs> okay, I can never remember where the denoising node is. There we go, it's in filter. So I'm going to add a denoise node. I'm going to put that into my viewer node. Um, make sure you've got HDR turned on here because we're generating HDR images with radiance. And then I'm going to add an image input. And that image input I'm going to now select my Libby image and I'm going to drag that into my denoise node. 
So the denoising process will take um, a few seconds, but you can see if I come over to my image editor again, that's my original Livy image, and then I can pick this viewer node, and you can see that straight away a lot of that speckliness has disappeared. So that's already sort of a much more or a much cleaner result than we had originally. But if I just come back to my viewer node, you'll see that, especially far away from the camera, we get some smearing. And this is where the albedo and the normal denoising elements will come into play. So I'll come back to my compositor, and you can see I've got a normal and an albedo socket in this denoise node. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another image. And I might just come back to my image editor and show you what these look like. So this is um, the image that's generated when I have normal selected here. This is the image generated and this will be called uh, camera after the name of the camera we're using. Norm and then one which is the, the frame. Uh, that we're using. So, you know, this if we were doing a parametric analysis or an animation, uh, this number would pertain to each frame of that parametric run or that animation. So this is just a color coded image to specify uh, the normals or the directions of the faces. So this wall is all pointing to the right. This is all green. The floor is all pointing up. This is all blue. Uh, the brick wall I have some normal perturbation turned on here with radiance um, and we get slightly different normals coming out of that because of the texture map that I've applied to that wall. We also then have the albedo and this is just the color or the reflectivity, the albedo of the materials within the image with one um, specular reflection in there and you can see that in that glass part of the railing and we create this image when we turn on albedo here and that's called uh, camera albedo and the frame so if i come back to my compositor in this new image node i can now add the normal and i can drag that into my normal socket and if i zoom in on this image a little bit just wanna if you look here this normal if I unconnect it you see yeah it's a little bit worse so this additional normal map just improves that smearing in the background a little bit you see the brick textures now come up here but we've still got a bit of smearing here at the very corner so I'm going to add a third image node and this I'm going to add in my albedo image and I'm going to drag that into my albedo socket so Livy image into image, normal into normal, albedo into albedo. And you can hopefully see now that's really cleared up that back smearing. So the two, albedo is probably more, the most important of the two. So you can see the smearing there with it unconnected and then bring that in. And we should see that smearing now goes away. Uh, so it's still not going to be perfect, but it is a pretty good and simple way of uh, just cleaning up. So there's my original image. And this is now my fully denoised image. So it's just a simple, quick way of cleaning up uh, radiance images, especially when you're simulating at lower accuracy. But as I say, this denoising process is no replacement for um, more accurate results that you generate with medium and high quality settings here. Um, but yeah, I hope that kind of um, 
sort of uh, makes it clear how we can denoise radiance images within Blender using Livy. Okay, cheers then, bye now.